Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Top of the day to you from wherever you're watching from. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord who has made us uh, a living soul. We also thank him for the privilege to be his mouthpiece. May his name be praised forever. We also thank you, our dear adorable listener, for being there to hear God's word from our, mind, our mouths. May his name be praised forever. Turn with me. Hallelujah. To Colossians, Colossians chapter number one, Colossians one, I'll just read the verses 15 to 20, Colossians one, the lines 15 to 20, please do well to join me as I read, who is the image of the invisible God? the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power. All things were created by him and for him and he is before all things by him all things consist and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning the first born from the dead and in all things he might have preeminence for it is for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him I say, whether they be things on in earth or things in in heaven. Please let's say a word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we pray that you breathe on your word. Let your word find free course and free expression through this earthen human vessel. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. I'd like to read that um, lines 15 again for emphasis who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Hallelujah. Jesus, the image of the invisible God. <laughs> the passage we just read is actually talking about Jesus Christ. But verse 15 clearly states that he is the image of the invisible God. The fact that God is invisible does not mean he is unreachable. <laughs> God is invisible but he is reachable. John 4 24, God is spirit and they that will worship him, will have relationship, will have koinonia with him, must do it in spirit and in truth. If they are going to worship God, it must be in spirit and in truth. The fact that God is invisible does not mean he is unavailable or unreachable. In fact, Isaiah spoke, hallelujah, Isaiah chapter number 6 and line 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw 
also the Lord sitting upon a throne. I am lifted and his train filled the temple and he stood between the seraphim. Each one had six wing with twine he covered his face and with twine he covered his feet and with twine he did fly. And the one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy is the Lord. The whole head is full of his glory. Isaiah saw the Lord. The fact that the Lord or that God is invisible doesn't mean he is unavailable or he is not reachable. That's an Old Testament reference, just one of the several. Let's look at the New Testament at chapter number 7. Hallelujah. At chapter number 7, yes, verse 55. And but he talking about Stephen, Apostle Stephen, but he being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. The fact that God is invisible does not mean is unavailable or is unreachable. But we, we are not focused on God per se for today. We are focused on the fact that Jesus is the, is the image of the invisible God, the practical experience of the invisible God. Hallelujah. Um, Genesis 1 verse 26. Uh, I love the scripture. Amen. Genesis 1 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the hair and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth man is the first image of god Man was the first image of God. And God said, let us, let us. That word let us as love um, undertones some scholars of the opinion that God was calling angels. But because the angels do not have the same capacity to reason, to think. They are, this Bible refers to them that angels are ministering spirit. They are only waiting for order of and from God and his people so that nullifies the fact that he was referring to the angel there is another school of thought that says that he was referring to the divinity i think i want to pitch a tent with that but that's not the focus come let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion that clearly spells it out that man was made in the image of in fact man is the first image of God man is the first image of God and God had perfected the plan God had perfected the plan of what man was going to look like before he came of what man was going to do the two things what man was going to look like and what he is to do as per his setting as per his 
configuration. Come, let us make man in our image. Man was originally made in the image of God. So man is the first image of God. God had a great plan, a good plan for man to have dominion, to have dominion, to have dominion like he God has dominion. Two things about the plan of God for people that I have seen. Number one is that the plan is usually greater than the mind of the recipient of the plan. Gideon was hiding from the Midianites and an angel was dispatched to him to tell him that he should go and his mind. He had several complaints. He wasn't expecting that. wasn't anticipating that. Amen. The plan of God is usually greater than the mind of man. The mind of the recipients. First Corinthians 2, 9, 2, 10. Eyes has not seen. Ears has not heard. Neither has the heart emerging. What the Lord has planned, proposed, programmed for them who love him. The plan of God is usually greater than the mind of man. Number two, the plan of God is usually other than the man. Look at this. This was before the man was created at all. Man was already put in a certain kind of pedestal before he was created. The same Thing happened, Jeremiah 1 5. Before you were born, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew thee and I ordained thee to be a prophet. The plans of God are usually greater than the mind of the recipient. The plans of God are usually older even than the actors. Hallelujah. Man was the first image of God. Number two, man lost that image when they fell into sin. Man lost that God context when they fell into sin. When we fell in the garden of Eden, we lost that God content. We lost that God image. That's why Jesus spoke to them. You are of your father, the devil. Because you are sinning like him. You are behaving like him. You are doing things like him. That's an aberration against the initial model, initial thought, initial configuration, initial setting of being in the image of of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, the image of God. After the fall of the first image of God, which accordingly we have established that that was man, Genesis 1, 26. Then the plan began almost immediately to redeem man to God, to bring back man to God, to bring man to his first estate, to redeem the glory of man to the initial plan, to redeem the battered, the, the derobed man, the displaced man, the distorted man, the lacerated man, to the place of having full glory, of displaying the image of God. Colossians 1, 14 to 15 talks about being redeemed, being redeemed, being brought forth, being brought back to the initial image of God, radiating the presence of God, radiating the glory of God. That's the assignment that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, came to do. Hallelujah. Verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness 
of sin and when we have redemption to redeem us plus back to the place where God made us to be which is the place of dominion which is the place of being an image of God hallelujah God came to rescue to restore our lost image hallelujah praise the name of the Lord Hmm. I want us to read a scripture. First Timothy. Hallelujah. Um, all right. First Timothy um, three and sixteen. First Timothy three line sixteen. And without controversy great is the mystery of godliness god was manifest in the flesh justified in the spirit seen of angels preached unto the Gentiles, believed on on the word received unto glory great is the mystery of godliness god was manifest in the flesh a part of god came to the world to redeem our lost image to us again to redeem us to bring us back to our place of initial glory which is to represent god to have dominion on earth and to worship him hallelujah amen, amen. Let's just look at a few uh, biblical uh, evidences that Jesus actually is the image of God. Is the image one of the areas where there are controversies in our faith is around Jesus, his death, his resurrection, his origin. Those have issues in some places some people are trying to negate this so let's just try to establish with other biblical references aside where we've read initially colossians 1 15 other biblical references that shows that jesus is the image of the living god hallelujah number one Reference is that he came from heaven. He came from heaven. He, wo- he retained a connection to heaven and submitted to heaven, which is to God. He came from God. He retained, he sustained, he maintained connection with God and submitted to God. John 6, 38, Jesus speaking, I came from heaven. I came from heaven. I came from my father. I am not confused to my source. I am not confused about my source. I am not guessing about my source. Mm -mm. I know where I came from. I know the kingdom I came to this world to represent. So Jesus knew his origin. His origin can be traced to heaven. His origin can be traced to God so we can as well establish that he is the image of the invisible God. Hallelujah. Number two, it did not only come from heaven, he asked God as his father. And this time around, he is not the one saying it. It is God himself that said it all the way from heaven. God is his father and he said it clearly in the scripture on so many occasions. One of it is Matthew. Hallelujah. The gospel according to Matthew. Matthew chapter numbers 3. Hallelujah. Hmm. Matthew 3, yeah, wait there. Matthew 3, 16 to 17. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him and he saw the spirit of god descending like a dove and lighting upon him and lo a voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom 
I am well pleased. God spoke from heaven that Jesus is his beloved son. So we can also establish that Jesus must be the image of God. For God to have come out and come down to emphasize and say to us, on several occasions, one of it is what we just read in Matthew 3, 16 to 17, that Jesus is his son. Hallelujah. Number three, he returned to heaven. Unfortunately, in our own case, perhaps we die. We are dust and we will return to dust. Our spirit, our soul goes to Hades, awaiting judgment of God. There are two sections in Hades, that's not where we're going today. But our spirit, our soul goes to Hades. This body is dust, came from dust, and we return to dust. This is clearly stated. Genesis 3.19, Ecclesiastes 3.10. You are dust, you came from dust, and you will return to dust. But this was not so in the case of Jesus Christ. At chapter number 1 and Nine. Hallelujah. All right. Acts chapter number one and line nine. Good. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And they looked, I mean, then now, and while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. He went back to where he came from. He did not stay like us. He was not eaten up by those. He went with his body. So we can say he returned to his place of rest. He returns to his place of abode. So Jesus is the perfect image of the invisible God. Hallelujah. Jesus is the perfect image of the invisible God. I'd like to close or conclude for today with this portion of the scripture at 413. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were on land and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. They took notice of Peter. They took notice of John. They know their educational qualification. They know their family background. They know everything about them. But something they took notice about them is that the boldness with which they speak they, 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 they speak the word of God and the, the things that they were doing seems like they were trying to replicate what Jesus did while he was on her. In other words, they were seeing Jesus in them. They saw Jesus at work in them. In other words, they have begun to act like Jesus. They have begun to resemble Jesus. Even when Jesus was not around anymore, they saw the image, these traces of Jesus on them. Their character, their knowledge was showing something about an encounter with Jesus. They began to do like Jesus. If people are to take notice of us, 
if people are to look at us critically, whose image are we displaying, whether in church or out of church, in the place where we walk, in the place where we live with our co-workers, whose image can they say that we are this? Playing. It is important that we display the image of Christ if we are his own. If we are truly his own, people should see the image of God, the image of Christ in us. It was said that in Antioch, people were called Christian, not because they wanted to be called Christian, not because there was no other name for them, but because they were behaving like Christ. This passion of the scripture asked four things. They looked at Peter. They looked at John. They had begun to behave like Jesus. Why don't you take up the image of Jesus today? Why don't you take up back your lost glory and begin to look like Jesus and begin to look like God in your heart, in your attitude, in your inactions and in your action. The Lord bless everything you lay your hands upon today. You will go and you receive favor. Lord, we give you grace to take up the image of God, just like Christ is the image of the invisible God. God bless you. I'll see you another time. My name is Benga Aluko. God bless you.